This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen. They did. He did. He's here. He's here. And he brought the crew with him, damn it. All kind of felons and criminals walking up in the <laughs> Damn, man. What's up, man? What's up? Kev, who's this one right there, man? That's my trainer, man. That's your trainer? That's my trainer right there. This dude, man. That's boss. Yeah, that's the boss. That's the boss Hello, right boss. there. Man, boss, Kev. Boss ain't had a haircut in a while, so he's going to try to, he gonna try to get out the way of any camera. Yeah, man, that's, a, that's a, a solid guy, man. So he, he got your arms like this, dude. Yeah, man. That's, that's the one? That's the guy right there. Yeah? Travel with the trainer. Keep it keep it right, man. What's up yep. with you, family? Sun's out, guns out. Oh, sun's out, guns out. I like that. Sun's out, guns out. That's what it is. Kev, I was doing my research, man. And, oh, uh, shit. Yeah, man, Kev, I was doing my research, oh, man. Oh, shit. And, and I was reading some stuff, man. I was putting together in my head, man. This is what I put together, man. Kevin. Kevin Hart, let's talk about who did you don't say it. Okay. Okay, because I had a conversation with Michael Jordan once. Okay. And he was telling me, he said something to me about myself, and I couldn't stand to hear it. And he said, hey, you don't say it, let me say it. Okay. All right. I was adding up your money. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> All great stories he started start off like just like that. <laughs> I might be off a few hundred thousand, a few million. Total film gross is seven hundred and forty-two million one hundred and twenty-five thousand five hundred and four dollars to date. Jeez. I've never heard that number in my entire freaking existence. Okay. Jeez. First African American comedian to net over one point one million dollars for two day ticket sales, bumping Eddie Murphy from his slot. <laughs> Really Over half research. a million tickets sold in the first uh, weekend uh, for his North American tour. Very true. Okay, what now tour? Um, let me see. Uh, the first comedian to headline an NFL stadium. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Down. August 30th. Hey, that's crazy. crazy. Man. And, 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 the, and the list goes on and on and on. And I didn't realize how much money Kevin Hart been making over the past <laughs> oh, yeah. 10. Because he was when we first met, he had no money. You know, he was wearing wigs. Wearing wigs? Kevin was broke, yo. Oh, <laughs> what is, was this was an Oakland swag? What is this? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm like, damn, man. I thought I made some great decisions with my career. Right. But I'm Right. At the, the, <laughs> that sounds the, the weird. Difference of man, but, <laughs> God damn it. Congratulations, yeah, thank man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Is it's, that uh, scary? You know what? It's not it's not that it's scary. It's uh it's it's a little surreal. Yeah. Mm. That's the right word to use for it. Because you 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 do things, of course, to succeed. You don't yeah. you don't step into any realm of business or entertainment not to win. Yeah. You do it to say, oh my God, I want to eventually do this and when this starts to happen, you got to step back and go, this is crazy. Like, yeah. The mm. tour right now, the What Now tour is so disgusting. <laughs> like, it's, I, I, I don't even, I don't even have words for it. We yeah. went on sale. My tour has been on sale for three weeks. Yeah. And I think we're at like 660,000 tickets sold. Wow. Uh, I mean, we, we put the tickets on sale for Madison Square Garden. We sold out three shows in a day. Three one, shows in one, one day. day. So three then I said, well, let's see. If I can go to Barclay. Yeah. We sold out two shows at the Barclay in a day. Yo. So Dope. I said, well, geez, what well, can I do all of the boroughs around? So I literally have hit every borough in New York, and then I go outside of New York, then I go Philadelphia, then I go Delaware, like DC, Baltimore, you name a place. I'm I what I'm doing is trying to I'm trying to do just what hasn't been done mm. for this particular tour because I don't know how long I'll be able to do it at this level. So yeah. I said, I need to try to achieve mm. the right. unachievable right mm -hmm. now. In so your prime. This is, this is, when I say ridiculous, yeah. ridiculous. I'm probably going to, we're doing 47, 47 uh, domestic dates and then I'll probably do about 38 to 40 international dates. Dude, where you, it goes you jigger. Well, it's it's your jigger. Listen, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who I am. That's <laughs> not for me to say. That's for yeah. the people to to yeah. dictate what I am. Is is amazingly blown away and humbled by the support that my fans give me. And you know, I don't. I don't think it gets any better than this. This this special will be my best special. I this, promise you that. This will be your best special. I prom I can. I can on record say. What now will definitely be my best special to date. I can say that on record. Is that what you want to, like, how do you want your legacy to read? 
I wanted to, you know, simply is 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 what I am. Mm-hmm. What what I am and what I represent. I represent hard work, mm-hmm. uh, determination, motivation. I think without without a doubt, yeah. if anything else, by watching me, it's simply an example of hard work pays off. Mm. That's it. What you put into your craft, you can get out to it if you put 110% into it. And I'm, I'm just an example of that. So I think within stand-up comedy, this is now my fifth special. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Grown Little Man, uh, Seriously Funny, Laughing My Pain, Let Me Explain Now What Now. This will be the last one that I tape because going to a stadium, I can't I can't do that again. I can't mm-hmm. duplicate that. I can't mm-hmm. I can't come back for my next special at another stadium. Mm-hmm. This is it hasn't been done. It's the only comedian to do it. So I don't want to tape anymore after this. I'll still tour. Yeah. I'll still do shows, but I want to go out on a on, on a top, top right? where it was like, oh my God, that's the special where he did this. And yeah. what you really need to understand here is I got a production. Like I got a seven truck production that, for this that tour. you own this is this is this, this is my proprietor is solely kevin all Hart. me all me 100 percent me pay wow. for pay for by me like the the term comedic rock star that i've used in the past mm-hmm. people will now get to see the definition of that i mm-hmm. say it because my whole goal was to bring a rock and roll like environment to stand-up comedy as a comedian what can i do to to set the bar at another level what can i do for our generation for mm-hmm. people to go oh my god Holy mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. I had fire on Let Me Explain. How can I beat that? Mm-hmm. With a production. It's a production. Like, yep. <laughs> it's, it, it's an event. Like, yeah. I, I have rehearsals. Yeah. I got, it's like, like the Grammys. Yeah, or, this yeah, is, the, this the is Oscars. Some, the, yeah. They're building a yeah. stage. The yeah. stage has to travel with me as I go. My stage is interactive with my performance. Yeah. This is this is like nothing that I've done before. I got real creative on this, and I, I think my fan base is going to appreciate it. I'm always trying to become a new version of of me how can i be the best version of myself so what what have you learned as um becoming your blueprint because I, you know i I love what you do mm-hmm. and, I, and i love what most comedians do so mm-hmm. i like to have a lot of comedians give them a, a platform to come up and talk about what they do there's a lot of condolution on what it is you guys great do. work you like that word great work yeah, great just, work. i freestyled that baby you know great that's where i come from man. all right um <laughs> What what is the new blueprint? You know, it's not what you know Richard did. It's not mm-hmm. what Eddie did. It's different now. We're in a social media generation. You know, people don't have the proprietorship that you. You have. know what it is. You know what it is. It's not. It's not that it's a new blueprint. There's yeah. a new approach to success. Yeah. In other words, you don't. You don't need the permission of of a higher level uh, to to make you feel. That you can do what you want to do. You're yeah. you're in a position now in our generation to where you can create your own content. You can distribute and put out your own content for free. Yeah. For free. I say this because literally if you really want to talk about production, production is an iPhone now. Mm-hmm. Production is a iPhone 6. Production is a 5D camera mm-hmm. that you are shooting high quality videos on now that you can edit and put out at your disposal. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have a full-fledged production in here. You don't have a serious camera crew. You got a stationary camera. That camera yeah. sits right there, tapes you, and then when he's done, edits that up, you post it virally. Mm-hmm. Those viral hits can get anywhere from 500,000 to a million. Yeah. You now have Sometimes five webisodes. Million. Oh, five million. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, now, <laughs> you now got webisodes. Yeah. So right now, for free, mm-hmm. you're distributing your content. People now log on to see your content mm-hmm. because people log on to see that content, which you can do is have advertisers come on and pay you to advertise on your content because eyeballs are there. Mm-hmm. In other words, it's it's business, but it's also common sense. Nothing's for free. So when people see that people are watching things, oh my God, if this is what people are watching, mm-hmm. I need to pay to put my stuff here so people can see my product. So as a comedian now, all right, you know what? I'm not getting the stage time I want. I'm not able to travel and headline these comedy clubs. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and make myself a success on the internet so when I do get to a point where I can be an attraction scene, yeah. I'm coming with a different fan base and I have something else to offer. Mm-hmm. You have to be unique. You have to be creative. So I think in today's time, it's it's literally just about you realizing your own potential and being creative within your own potential. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. this is what I can do. So I need to master this, this and this. And now what I've done is, you know, besides the entertainment side of me being a comedian and an actor, it's my brand. It's my company. It's so company. within my company... 
what else can I do? I'm going to start doing specials for other comedians, younger comedians that want to do our specials wow. that aren't mm -hmm. in the position. I'm going to fund them. I'm going to do it to where it comes into Heartbeat Productions and not to make income off of it, but have a brand, have a name that people associate great content with and give other people a chance. Now that I'm giving them a chance, that can trickle down. And when that trickles down, it can go on and go on and go on. Also, building a, uh, I'm a building a platform, a viral component to mm -hmm. where I'll have multicultural content for funny. Multicultural being I'm going after everybody yeah. all over the world. I don't care where you are. Who are the funny guys on the Internet? Where you at? Where yeah. are you? I want to bring you all to a place in a hub where I allow you to make the money that you should make. Off of your content because right now people just don't know how. Yeah, people don't know how that happens and what that world is. So educating and at the same time allowing you to benefit from it. That's, that's what it is. So king. it's it's God, it's damn. showing I'm it's just showing that you're in a different space. It's it's being in a different space, but actually saying okay, now that I'm in this space and I have the education of knowing. Yeah, some other people don't. You know what? I'm gonna bring them on board and come a part of this heartbeat brand and let me help you and show you. And then from that, you go on to be successful. You going to do something, but I'm giving you a launching pad. Mm. I'm giving you a springboard to go and then do whatever You're giving you want to do. Back. Uh, let me ask you this. I was with a, a producer this past weekend, and uh, we were talking about Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we've seen Chris Rock confront Hollywood and, uh, mm -hmm. and the New Yorker and talked about, mm -hmm. you know, the lack of opportunities uh, for black folks. Um, we've heard Monique have her, you know, uh, her discretion mm -hmm. with Hollywood and feeling like she uh, has been shut out. And I've heard from this producer that usually there's one black person that for each movie house that they like to deal with and give opportunity to. Mm -hmm. And you're that person now in uh, Hollywood. You know, I mean, that's tough. It's, it's tough because I feel like that's that's a topic that you can you can feed into that topic and yeah. you can you can partake in that conversation. And that's mm -hmm. a conversation that's never ending. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the world ain't perfect. Yeah. At the end of the day. Now mm -hmm. you can either add to those situations or you can take away from those situations. Mm -hmm. I'm firm in my position of I'm not adding to those situations. Mm -hmm. uh, hypothetically or quote unquote, if I am that guy, oh, okay. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know that. I didn't, yeah. that's not what I walked into a room and I didn't sign a paper that says I'm the only black guy that you want to work with right mm -hmm. now. Right. What I am is a guy who's got 19 plus years of the word no. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. people, yeah. people just yeah. see the last five years. I got 19 years of no, mm -hmm. not good enough. No, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't get the part. No, yeah. no. So when it finally does get to a point where they say we want to work with you, I tell you the real reason why it's because of my stand up comedy. I got mm -hmm. to a point where my stand up comedy showed financial success. I had hard tickets that people were paying to come see me perform. Mm -hmm. So now if I'm a business, just like I just told you now, with me wanting to produce these specials and get all these other people, that's me as a businessman. As a CEO of a distribution company, whether it's Universal, whether it's Warner Brothers, whoever it is, if I say, people like this guy, we should get in business with this guy because I can possibly make money by dealing with this guy. That's a business move. Yeah, That's a smart move. So, hey, let's put Kevin Hart in movies. My... Stand-up tickets have now transformed into box office tickets. Yeah. You just said yourself, over seven hundred million dollars made in the box office. Yep, seven hundred forty-two million. Seven hundred forty-two okay. million made yeah. in the box office. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you know that's a studio realizing, hey, we need to partner up with this guy and let's do things. But then as a talent, you go, well, how can I make it best for me? That's when you put yourself in a position where, all right, let's combat, let's go, let's go leverage for leverage. Mm -hmm. All right, you want to work with me? I want to give you my content. You want to work with me? Help me build my company. So I'm producing this movie with you. Mm -hmm. Heartbeat Productions comes in with Universal Studios yeah. and brings you blah, blah, blah. Now there's a give and a take. Mm -hmm. So so I feel like when you have these conversations of, you know, racism, racism exists and, and racism does this and does that, I, that's that's pretty much something that you're allowing to to happen by contributing to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you look at Tyler Perry, you look at Oprah Winfrey. Those are people that are in a powerful position that partnered up with people to do their own stuff. Yeah. Say what you want. Tyler Perry is a mastermind. Mm -hmm. Mastermind. Mm -hmm. He his own studio. Mm -hmm. He yeah. built his own studio in Atlanta. You don't people don't I don't think you understand right. how serious that is. He has a stage. There's there's a lot yeah. with different stages. Yeah. So so rather than adding to a problem that some people talk about of racism and the opportunities lacking. 
He said, well, I'm going to go and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create my own and I'm going to change it for what I want to change it for. That's a person that took the took his own yeah. situation and made it for the better and now creates his own content. Yeah. Oprah. Okay. I don't know. We all know Oprah got money. Everybody yeah. knows that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody knows Oprah got money. Yeah. But you don't realize the decisions right. that Oprah has made. Yeah. She's partnered up with these independent directors with the the Lee Daniels before it was crazy. She she went in and got, you know, the the actors and the movies that she wanted to buy the rights to because she wanted to make people aware. That's a person making a change. Yeah. So so if you have a problem with it and you feel like that there aren't opportunities, then when you get in a position to change it, change it. Mm. Kevin Hart has joined us. Well Kevin Hart has joined us. Yep. You talked about your uh, stand-up comedian pretty much um, being the foundation, uh, your stand-up um, show being the foundation of all your success. Interesting price of fame is when you reach this point, you know, that's when you get your biggest critics for mm -hmm. whatever reasons. And I swear, man, I, I don't know where it came from, mm -hmm. but a lot of comedians <laughs> come up on my show and they talk about you. Uh -huh. And Ari Spears came up and this is what he said about your stand-up. To sit up there and have a team of motherfuckers help and write your jokes? How incredible, like, how much credit can you get for being incredible if that's not your train of thought? But if, if that's not your point of view, those aren't your thoughts, those aren't your words articulated and formulated to come out and make a motherfucker hunch over and hold their stomach and wipe their tear ducts because they dying because of what they hearing. Kevin probably won't even comment on this if, if he even hears it. And even if he did, again, I'm a small got in his oh, world okay. so he to address me is for what mm. you know what i mean but but niggas know game recognize game, <laughs> game it's recognize like look, let, let's let's put all the cameras and the lights away uh -huh. and when it's just me and you we can look in each other's eyes and nigga you know okay so when you hear that um uh, because i know you've heard that uh first of all I, I didn't understand what difference did it make for a comedian if you did have people that were writing for I didn't I don't know how that works. Well, here's well first let me let me just break this whole situation down in okay. such a professional manner. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> first thing first, I I shouldn't respond, but I I am just for just for clarity, okay? okay. Uh I'm a comedian. Uh within the comedian realm, mm -hmm. I support fellow comedians. It's it's a small it's a small group probably one of the toughest industries to make it in. It's not easy. There's a chitlin circuit. There's a, a tough road that you got to go through to get to any level of success. Not getting paid. Uh, shows getting canceled. Driving 8 to 12 hours. I understand the grind. I get that. So anybody that has any type of success in comedy, me, being the person I am, I do this. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, you applaud them. Fuck yeah. I'm, a, I'm going to applaud you. Yeah. You're the shit. Mm -hmm. You're telling jokes for a living. You you did it. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Also, when I do interviews, it's a, it's about me, <laughs> right? Like if I'm if yeah. I'm on an interview, if yeah. I'm talking, I want to talk about me. I got I got a lot of shit going on. Let's I'm here to I'm here to promote. I'm here to get mm -hmm. the word out about mm -hmm. myself. I just don't get how how these people have the time to talk about a guy that never talks about them. Eventually, the, the arrow has to point back to them and they got to go, yeah, maybe I'm starting to look a little angry. Yeah. Maybe I'm starting to look a little bitter. Now, just to break it down a little further, and this is the part where people are going to go, wow, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. My stand-up comedy is all self-based. Mm. I don't tell jokes. My kids, my life, my divorce, my school situation with my kids, my house situation, it's all personal. It's not something that I can go out and have writers come up with and bring back to me because it's my life. Now, what I do have is two guys, Harry Ratchford, Joey Wells. Harry's right there. Traveled with me for the last, how What's many up, years Harry? we got in, Harry? Hey, Harry. <laughs> how many years we got in? Eight years, Eight years right? Eight years. Mm -hmm. Eight years uh, where full time. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I just want you to come with me. Just basically help me out. I say a lot of things. I don't really write jokes. When I do say stuff just on the side, jot it down, then we can go over it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you build a relationship with these guys. These guys get to a point where they know your voice. They know you just like you know yourself. Mm -hmm. 
So when you're saying things on stage, hey, Kev, you know what else would be funny? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Kev, you know what else you should do? Right. Hey, look at this. What you think about this? Oh, my God, that's funny. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm going to add to that. You then become a team. Yeah. Nobody makes it on their own. Nobody. I don't give a shit who you are. I don't care what you've attained. I don't care what level of success you have. If you do say that you make it on your own, you shit on the people that's been with you since day one. Mm -hmm. I would never shit on my guys. I'm in a successful position because of my guys. My guys have helped me build this brand. Every hour that I've done, I want you guys to go look at Seriously Funny, Laugh My Pain, Let Me Explain. It's going to say, written by Kevin Hart, Harry Ratchford, Joey Wells. Mm -hmm. My guys get credit because my guys roll with me. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. Comedians, when you tell a joke, you get off stage, another comedian normally comes up to you and goes, hey, you know what else you should add to that? You know what else is funny? Mm -hmm. Hey, do this right here. Oh, that's good. Oh, shit, that's funny. That's called the love of comedy. Yeah. That's called the love of your craft. You're constantly adding. People are constantly helping you add to your craft. When you go as far as to, to, to put the accusations that my guys are in the back of comedy clubs, and stuff, it gets ridiculous because now, you know, now what? What is your ultimate goal? What are you What are you trying to accomplish? Now, even after hearing Aries say that, I still got love for Aries. You still hey, got man, love for listen, Aries. Listen, I want you to go and be as successful as you can. But what I also want you to do is, I want you to look at the track record of the guys that are talking. I want you to, to Google them. Google them. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying Google it to see what's going on. See how many hour specials Aries has put out. Aries has been doing comedy for about 20 years. Aries... I think he has one special. Not that he can't put out more specials. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a guy that's angry at himself. So the only way for me to make myself feel better is to attack the guy that's quote unquote on top. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. I understand where you're coming from. Um, Mike Epps, who's someone who's on a different level mm -hmm. of success, mm -hmm. um, came to the show mm -hmm. and he said a few things too. Um, and here's what he said about you. So you see this dude that's, that's this mega comedian that's on a platform and everybody thinks he's funny and everybody thinks he's good at what he do and little do they know, he's got workers out there that's sitting around and say, because that's what the writers do. They sit there and they look at a comic and say, he ain't gonna make it and go give Kev the joke. Well, I challenge, I challenge the guy that can show me the other comics that have a kid named Heaven and son named Hendrix. Yeah. Uh, that, are, that are just engaged to a mm -hmm. fiance named Iniko, yeah. uh, whose dad was on drugs, mm -hmm. uh, sober now, whose mom passed away. I just, I want to meet the comic whose lives mirror mine that I'm, that I'm, that I'm taking the stuff from. I also challenge the guy that can find time in my schedule for my writers to be at a comedy club. Because mm -hmm. you want to know the sad part? My writers are now in the WGA. It's the Writers mm -hmm. Guild. Mm -hmm. um, within my company, Heartbeat Productions, my writers have now sold three scripts. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah. Just, just give me a second. <laughs> just give me a second to break this down. So, <laughs> so in that off time when I'm not doing stand-up, their job is to create this content. I oversee the content, give notes on it. They go back and rewrite it. I go notes back on that. They go back, punch it up. When is that a great point? We then take it into a studio. We pitch it. I then sell it. That's their due diligence. That's how they survive with or without me now. I built them to the point where now they're more than just the guys that are with Kevin. These are established writers. Once again, Harry Ratchford, Joey Wells. I want to know the time that these guys have to not be in the office space that I'm paying for mm. and do the job that I'm paying them to do. When I went back on the road, which is just now, we come to New York. We come to New York, Harry. How long do we stay in New York and what do we do? We do how many runs at comedy clubs? How many runs? Like, what, what is to our build an hour? Yeah, to build yeah an we hour. did two weeks here, but we went out uh, four comic clubs each night. Each yeah. night, right? Wow. We did 15, 20 minutes each night and bombed. Yeah. But, <laughs> that's, but that's how you build material. That's how we build material. And have the, after we build the material, is it just my assumption or do we then go to small comedy clubs and we book? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I do three shows each day. And then the goal is for us to take the take the the skeleton of an hour that we had and now we mold it. So I'll go to a city. I'll go to fucking Salt Lake. We went to Salt Lake. We go to to 
Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne. We go to all of these places that you wouldn't expect to see me at. And I do a shitload of shows. And then I walk out with, yo, we got something. Yeah. And now I say, we need to do this for a year. I'll do that for a year. I don't have the time to, to be at a comedy club. I don't have the time. And what night are these younger comics performing that I know about? I just, I just don't understand the, the, the point where you get to, where you got to throw accusations out there. We're just throwing stuff out there. And here's the thing that makes me upset with Mike, man. Like, yo, Mike looked out for me. Mm. I was a younger comic. I remember when Mike got Friday. I was like, yeah. oh, shit. Yo, this is the guy. I remember at Laugh Palooza. Mike went on stage. He had on some leather pants, his little hat. He was on Fresh Day Day. Funniest guy out there. I met him. Hey, Mike, man, congratulations. I'm a young, young little dude. Bow down. Congratulations, man. Mike had some dates. Did a couple tour dates with Mike. Did like four or five dates. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Helping me out opportunity not once have i ever attacked him not once have i ever said anything but now that the ties have changed yeah now you have all of these problems with me that literally come out of nowhere mike got richard Pryor. i called him hey man that's huge yeah congrats. you called him when you got richard I fucking Pryor. Call, listen i fucking called mike congrats man you got a chance to do some dope shit that's iconic man please go go and focus on that man do it knock that out the park I, I talked to Mike because here, here's the thing, man. You know, we, we put on for camp, not us, but mm -hmm. I'm so real about shit. Mm -hmm. Like when I see things that I wish wasn't there, like you and Mike, someone, two people I've known for a while. And I asked Mike, hey, man, through all of this, see, I didn't know you called him and congratulated him. Mm -hmm. With this Richard Pryor story, would you consider uh, working with Kevin Hart? Right. And, and this, do we have what he said. This is what he said. We're going to try to get Kevin Hart in the movie. Because he's a, a hell of a salesman. Mm -hmm. And maybe if he's standing there, we'll get everybody to see us. <laughs> well, he's talented too, too Mike. Kev's well, talented, man. Yes, he is talented. But yeah. he's a, a good-ass marketer. Yeah. That's not mm -hmm. He's a good marketer. <laughs> and we it's might put him in the word. movie. <laughs> first, of all, yeah. first of all, that wasn't a word. That with marketer? That's not a word. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. <laughs> Second thing is, who... What are you supposed to be like? Do we do we see the level of, of I, I hate this for lack of a better word of ignorance. It's, mm -hmm. it's a certain level of ignorance that we're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. Here's here's why. If I'm Mike Epps right now, I'm about to do Richard Pryor. I'm about to do an amazing film. I don't have time to worry about fucking Kevin Hart. What I care about what Kevin Hart doing for? Kevin Hart hasn't stopped moving. Kevin Hart hasn't stopped putting out movies. He hasn't stopped going on tour. He hasn't stopped. Hosting shows on TV, you see that he's moving with or without your your pat on the back. Mm. So what time do I have to worry about that? Like I'm I'm about to do a movie that should shit on the world. I'm focused on that. If I come on sway, I want to talk about that. How? Why? Well, I, in fairness to him, I, we I brought it up. You know, even we even if you did, why am why am I the topic? Why? Like you see what all my all of my answers are, y'all yeah, want the best for all these guys. All of my answers are, dude, I, it really baffles me. Somehow it got back to what I was doing. Somehow it got back to me telling you what my writers really are doing. Somehow it got back to me telling you what's going on in my company. Somehow it got back to you to me basically promoting myself. Who is your best promoter other than you? Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who else can can get the word out about where you are in your career and what you want to do? Better than you. So when you say Kevin Hart's a great marketer, I'm not supposed to be. Mm. Mm. I'm not supposed to be. I'm not supposed to adapt to an environment that has been given to me, which is social media and master that environment. I'm not supposed to put myself in a powerful position. So studios got to leverage relationships and deals with me to step into a brand that I've built. 50 plus million people. That's mine. You just said I got 500,000 tickets sold, right? Mm -hmm. I told mm -hmm. you it was 600 something thousand. Yeah. Tweet. Tweet. That's not that's not a company mm -hmm. doing a promotion thing for me. That's me saying, "Hey, I'll do my own promotion. Don't cut that check to nobody. You cut that to my promotion company." Yeah. That's new generation promotion. That's something else that I built. Add to that brand. We'll do it. And that's a I, separate check on the That's a, a separate, separate check. And you know what damn. else that is? Yeah. That's me also putting other people that have worked with me in a powerful position. See that guy right there with that camera? Yeah. Quan been with me for 10 years now, Quan? 
Mm. 10 yeah. years, my videographer travels everywhere with me. Any content that you see, on the spot. He's got a book bag. He's got three laptops in that bag. He'll mm. edit it up, do whatever he has to do right now. Quan, I need that video right now. He'll go out there, send that video to me right now. I'll go and blast that video. There's a guy named Wayne Brown. Nah, G, can you do that too for nah, us, man? How many laptops? <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy named Wayne Brown. Yeah. It's not here right now. Wayne Brown is is second in command and my digital comedian component. Digital digital media component. Mm -hmm. So you have heartbeat, you have heartbeat digital. Jeff Clanigan heads Heartbeat Jeff Digital. Lanigan, yeah. Okay, Jeff now is hired by me to head Heartbeat Digital. I put a company in place. So these things that you see, it's it's authentic, it's organic, and that's what's that's what's great about it. But you need people to help you organize and control and 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 I guess you could say complete an initiative. Yeah. So when they say these things, oh, he's a great marketer, he's this and that. Hey, if if a light bulb goes off in your fucking head, you'll realize that. That's a way for you to get any and everything out that you want to do. Anything that you're doing, if you adapt to this environment, you you sell. Like I heard him, I heard him on the interview, and he's like, "Yeah, you know that that Twitter shit is stupid." Whatever he's like saying, like he he don't need to go to that. Hey, your fans are on there. That's how they talk to you. That's how they get to talk to you. Mm. Those are your fans. I don't care how many. I don't care if you got 30. I don't care if you got a million. When you say hi and they say hello back, <laughs> that's a big deal to them. Mm -hmm. That's how you talk to them. How can you not conform to that environment? How can you not adapt to that? So what I say to these guys is I say instead of taking two seconds to be angry about my success, why not, why not ask me a question so I can help you so you can obtain it? Mm. I don't want this shit just for myself. I get it. I get information. I'm on radio stations. I give it all the time. It's not a hating bone in my body. I want to see everybody be great. Mm. Everybody. So I don't understand with my level where the anger comes from. And the only thing that I can point to is it's insecurities within yourself. It has nothing to do with me. You, you got the movie. I know you got to go. Will Ferrell. Um, you know, you got the movie with Will Ferrell. Get hard. I'm just curious. And I'm, it's not a white black thing, but mm -hmm. what, what's some of the... the the bigger comedians who are white, what what kind of things do they say to you about your success? I, I hear nothing but amazing things. Like from whom? Uh, I had a big conversation. Matter of fact, this is the night the night of the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I go to the party, and the 40th anniversary for SNL was coming up. Mm -hmm. Steve Martin approaches me. Damn, I'm I'm Steve I'm literally Martin. like I'm I'm just in the area. Yeah, me and Nico talking. Steve Martin comes up to me and goes, "Hey." We see what you're doing. I just want to tell you that it's amazing. Mm. Congratulations. Just, I don't, I don't know the guy. Steve yeah. Martin. Steve Martin. Jerry Seinfeld. Kevin, we got to go to dinner. I want to talk. What you're doing is amazing. I love to see it. I love, I'm a fan of what you're doing. Positivity. Eddie. Eddie Murphy. Not a white guy, but positive. Chris Rock. Nothing but positive. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cedric the Entertainer. Steve Harvey. Another mentor of yeah. mine. Nothing but positive. As comedians, we do we're we're in a we're in a box. Everybody can't do what we do. Mm. We make a living off of making people laugh. Everybody can't do that. So I'll be damned if I'm a shit on what I what I consider my fraternity. Mm. I don't in all shapes and sizes. I mean, come on, Mike has Mike has said numerous things about me. You've never heard me respond because I, I don't have the time. Yeah. I don't, I don't get angry. It doesn't make sense. Kevin Hart, sense. man. Give me a, uh, give him a round of applause, man. Wait, hey, man. wait, before we say anything yeah. else. I always like to bring things back to where I feel it should be brought to. Right. Yeah. Uh, my tour, yes, is, uh, <laughs> is, is, is sold out. But, you know, these, I am adding more domestic dates uh, right. due to popular demand. And I will be <laughs> announcing those dates throughout the week. Um, I'm performing at Lincoln Financial. Uh, it's a stadium in Philadelphia. Yeah, we talked I, about no, that. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, that's where I will be filming yeah. my special. Uh, get Hard. That's coming out. Get Hard comes yeah. out uh, the 27th, 27th of yeah. March. Yeah. Uh, me and Dwayne and Rock Johnson, we're about to do a movie called Central Intelligence. I start doing that in, in April. Wow. Um, okay. mm. All right. Another movie called Intouchable. It's a remake of a of a foreign film. Yeah. It's a little more on a serious side, just mixing it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, Ride Along 2. I didn't tell you that. That yeah. comes out. Cool. Uh, okay. That comes out January 2016. Yeah. Um, season 5. 
Real Husband of Hollywood. I'm going to okay. go ahead and yeah, congratulations ahead and do that. that. I didn't you get my camera. Empire, that was on Empire. Empire. That came Sway to was on Empire. Yeah. You I didn't, do, I didn't that, do Kevin. Real Husbands yet, but congratulations. Thank you, man. I appreciate <laughs> that. It's a beautiful thing. Real Husbands. You got to be a husband. Sway. Husband. Yeah. Yeah. Sway, I will, yeah. I will, to your face right now, I swear to God, season five, I'm going to put you on Real Husbands. Ooh! Listen, swear to God. No, listen. Listen, made it. Come on. Swear to God. Swear to God. That's done. Okay. Swear to God, that's done. Uh, all of that was being said I want to make sure that this interview is left on a positive note man. absolutely yeah. man. Uh, I got nothing but love for any and everybody mm-hmm. uh, hopefully soon that love can be returned and you know what if it can't then you know I want you to get to wherever a happy place is for you I'm fucking happy and I'm doing what I love to do and at any point in my life I don't think I'm going to stop this is this is not a a race this is not something that's going to end fast my goals are high, and I got people that I look up to. When we talk about your Oprahs, your Tyler Perry, your Jay Zs, your mm-hmm. Beyonces, you're looking at self-made moguls. Yeah. And I'd be damned if I didn't see an example in front of me that showed me a light. I want that light. Mm-hmm. I'm going after that light. So that's why you see me grind the way I grind. Mm-hmm. To my fan base, thank you guys for being loyal. I love y'all. Sway, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Love Absolutely, you, man. man. All love right? you too, brother. Kevin Thanks. Hart, ladies and gentlemen. Sway in the morning, Shade 4-5. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.